So have you ever thought about what you should not be doing or what would be inappropriate? I don't know that you really think about those things, but it's important when you're traveling. So especially if you're about to go to somebody's country, live, or you're just traveling. Yeah, so let's get into it. We're going to talk about the things that may be taboo, irritating, or just downright wrong in Malaysia. Here we go. Hi there, I am Cha Jones. I am an intercultural consultant, expat, and soft life coach. And I'm living as an expat in Malaysia. So today I wanted to just talk about some of the things that you may not want to do if you're going to visit or live in Malaysia. You know, I often think about like some of the things that you just don't know that you just don't know and that you do and it's just downright inappropriate. Um, For instance, we were in the grocery store last week, Vince, you know, I did a video about that. If you didn't see it, go see it. But we were in Vince, which is one of my favorite stores. It's not the favorite, but it's like one of, I think I have like three favorite stores, but we were in the grocery store and there was this guy who, you know, it's difficult here because people can look a certain way and then you just have them all paid wrong. But this happened to be a Chinese guy who was American and he was loud, like quite loud. And so we all were taken aback because we were like, do we sound like that? Like he just was loud. And I was unaware that Malaysians don't really take too kindly to things being loud. But at that moment, nobody took too kindly to him being quite loud. But he just came off as this like very abrasive American. Um, And he was talking about being from like New York. (laughs) Oh, you know, New Yorkers tend to be quite loud and so it was it was interesting which then sparked a conversation between my friend and I regarding like are we loud like that like you know and it's important to respect the place that you're in and so you know I often because I'm a mother like try to find my son who is darting somewhere and like I call for him and I'm like oh my god that's just wild but so let's just talk about it like one thing is that you can unknowingly be rude and it's so so bad because oftentimes you don't think about some of the things that you do that could be inappropriate or could just be downright rude And one of them is being loud in Malaysia. Um, So if you come to Malaysia, don't be loud. This is what I found while living in Korea. So I'm going to, and traveling through Asia, is that Asians really have a problem with losing face. Um, And for those who don't understand what losing face is, they they don't want to be embarrassed (laughs) by anything. And so... um, If you're speaking to or asking direct questions to a Malaysian, I understand this is something I've read, is that that's considered them losing face. Um, So they really don't like to be asked direct questions. And you can put it in the comments, like we're not about to argue about it, but if, if that's untrue, let me know. Or if you found that to be accurate, let me know. But um, yeah, I think a lot of Asians really have a hard time in situations where they would be considered losing face. Um, I know for a fact when I lived in Korea, those three and a half years, like you kind of had to walk on eggshells around certain friends, especially if it was a boss. And it was just like annoying as hell because 
for me, I'm a very direct person. So like, I want to come to you with whatever issue and be like, okay, let's solve it. Let's, let's, you know, put it on the table. It is what it is. It's not what it's not. And let's move forward. No, no. <laughs> like, I think it's very passive aggressive. It just it reads very passive aggressive. My opinion, I own that. That's it. Um, oh, so here's another thing. So this is an Islamic country, right? And so with the Islamic culture, you don't do things with your left hand because the left hand is unclean. Why? Because you're supposed to go potty with the left hand. When you wipe, you wipe with the left hand, not the right hand. So for people who practice Islam, their belief is that hand is unclean. So please, tip number two, don't go shaking people's hands with your unclean hand. So, so if you're going to shake hands, do not shake hands with your left. Also, it's quite important to understand that, you know, it's okay, it's appropriate to eat with your hands in Malaysia. You will see people eating with either a spoon and a fork together, or you will see them eating with their hands. And that's cool, right? But here's the tip. Don't be out here eating with your left hand. That's just nasty. Cultural. Don't use left hand. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Don't use your left hand. All right, tip two. That was tip two. Now we're talking about tip three. So tip three is for those people who love their dogs. Mm -hmm. You know, people be loving their dogs out here. And I'm not mad at y'all. I'm just, you know, I'm not a dog or cat. I absolutely don't like cats. However, what I understand is cats are really appropriate. Um, the Muslims, they they can deal with cats because cats are seen as pure and they're actually seen as being a blessed animal. Me and cats don't really get along. Plus, I'm allergic, so I'm, I'm good on cats. But for dogs, okay, dogs are considered unclean. And for most of the population, believe that these are like outside pets. You know, you put them outside. They're the herders, they should have, you know, they go hunting, but they definitely aren't used for your pet to be like endearing and cuddled up to. That's not, that's, that's not what we're doing here in Malaysia. Um, so actually there are places that are not sanctioned for, so if you have a dog, you can't live in that neighborhood. And a lot of times it's, it's not, that they dislike the, the animal it is they see it as unclean and if you do have a dog they really think that cleaning yourself is important <laughs> hence why i don't really eat at everybody's house because people be having pets and they they don't really that's another story but if you have a dog in malaysia there are certain areas um that you will not see dogs at all. You may see a stray cat or two, but you won't see a dog. And there are certain areas that, you know, if you're going to live here with a dog, you need to go live in that area. Dessa Park City is one of them. And you can go to Dessa Park City and you can see all the little poodles with the little color hair and all the little things. That would be where you would want to live. And that's only because I've been there and I've seen it and I haven't seen dogs anywhere else. But if you have a dog you might want to check that the neighborhood because it may not be appropriate for you to bring your dog. That's just how it rolls around here. Um, it is also important, tip four, it's important that you respect nature. Now, I was reading something and um, it was about some foreigners who had came here. I'm not exactly sure where they came from. They sound like they were quite American, but I'm not going to put that on Americans because I'm still American. But at the, <laughs> at the end of the day, um, they were disrespectful. They were on a mountain. They, they did some very disrespectful things. And um, the people believe 
that because of their disrespect, the nature reacted in a certain way and some things happened. Now, I don't know all the details. I'm not even gonna lie to you. But I do know this, that from that, um, what I got from it was that um, Malaysians believe that you should respect nature and that nature are like your ancestors speaking, that your spirit is in nature, especially like in the wilderness, in the forest, and that those plants and animals have a spirit. And I'm with it. I'm, I'm with it. I believe that plants have spirits. And it makes sense that you ask permission to be in the forest. You ask perm permission to go down paths. Like, be respectful. It's just right. I mean, you know. But I don't know what... I don't know the nationality of the individuals who are disrespectful in nature, but it caused like a whole hurt, a not hurricane, but an earthquake from my understanding is what the people believe. And it makes good sense. Like when nature gets mad, you should get out of mother nature's way because she, she brings the thunder. So respect nature. Tip five. Um, when in Malaysia, and this is something I have, li I don't even know. When I lived in Korea, I had no idea what, it's so sad. I had no idea how to call emergency. I don't, I, I still don't. Um, I'm assuming it's 999, but I, I don't know. But what I had to learn quickly was because I'm traveling with a child and um, I had a health concern last year and I had to teach him how to call 911 in America. So um, it was important that when I arrived here, that I taught him how to call for emergency. And long and behold, I realized that it's not 911. Go figure. It's 999. And it's 999112 if you're calling on a mobile device. So that is important. If you didn't know that, now you know. I'm just trying to keep you in the know. Now, in many countries, the water is an issue. So tip number six, the water tends to be an issue in many countries. And sometimes it's because of parasites and just pollutants and yeah, 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 right? Um, so you have to boil the water if you want to drink it from the tap. And that's because of rust in some of the older buildings and the pollutants. So get you some boiled water or you can go like everybody else does and get uh, bottled water. And most people in their homes have a water filtration system and or I have the gallons where it's the cooler. So that's, I think the, pretty much most of the world, other than Aruba, Aruba has the best water. Like you can drink it from the tap. It's like so refreshing. It's one of the purest waters in the world. But that's a, just a little known fact that I learned while I was in the world. But anyways, um, Okay, so this is for all the people who are walking around who want to be in love and want to come here as couples. It's lovely. It's lovely. Now, what I do see is um, a lot of couples walk around holding hands. You know, I sat one time in the mall and just people watched. And I saw like couple after couple after couple walk and they all were holding hands. I was like, oh, that's so beautiful. Like, oh. I'm just gonna get me a relationship if I could walk around this mall holding hands too. But this is what you should know about being in Malaysia that public displays of affection like kissing, no go. It's disrespectful. Like it's frowned upon. And um, so I actually was reading an article about homosexuality. And this is a, a Islamic country. It's unlawful to be with same sex. 
in this country. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not being done. Um, I have seen some very openly gay people in Malaysia. Um, I've even seen some trans people in Malaysia. So I'm not saying that it isn't here by any means. What I'm saying is that it's unlawful and um, it's definitely, you can't be out here just like wandering. If, if it's something you do want undercover, I guess people don't really make a big deal out of it from my understanding. I could be wrong. I'm sure somebody's going to leave a comment and just tell me how wrong I am or how right I am. Either way, um, the point of the matter is that whether it's same sex or opposite sex, if you are in a relationship, it's great. Hold hands, wonderful, but you can't be out here kissing. And there's actually on the train, there is signage that says no kissing. So know that. that that's my next tip. I just want you to be informed so you don't be out here going to jail. Like if they're enforcing laws to, I don't know what that is. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you the information. That's the tea for today. Um, <clears throat> now, if you are a weed smoker, if you believe in 420, if you need a blunt in your life, this is not the place for you. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. The drugs are not, you know, it. it's not worth dying for. Just know that, okay? <laughs> so if you do drugs, if you get found with some drugs, you can go to jail for a long period of time. And so like literally um, doing drugs, being found with drugs can have your life terminated, period. Um, so that's just not something I'm, I'm willing <laughs> I don't understand. It's, it's, it, don't do it. Don't bring no drugs into people's countries. Why are you doing that? Don't find no drugs while you're here. Don't be out looking for no drugs. It's just not. Listen, baby, don't do it. So, yeah, I hope that those tips helped and that if you plan on coming to Malaysia, that you can be respectful of their laws as well as the things that may be inappropriate for you to do or found as rude um, because it's it's really important that you know it's like going to somebody's house and they have it's, okay we're in Asia if you go to somebody's house you take your shoes off period that's it like it's not even a question why are we questioning this is my house <laughs> But um, oftentimes, you know, you have people who don't want to take their shoes off somewhere. That's rude if you go to somebody's house and that's their rule. So same thing when you go to somebody's country, you want to play by the rules because it's imperative that you do so. You are a visitor. And if you don't want to play by the rules, then you need to go somewhere else. That's just end of story. And so I wanted to make sure that I did a YouTube to help people not be rude, um, to think about some of the things that may be taboo, um, or just think about how you can be kind and show up in a place where people have differences um, that are different from what your norms are. So just because it's normal for you to walk around holding hands and kissing in the park in your country. That's not normal in all countries. So be mindful of that. And um, I just wanted to make sure that I did this video to just think about some of the things that I, oh, I didn't even mention this. So this is how this all started because I wanted to be mindful of like hand positionings and um I was understanding like you shouldn't point with your index finger at people. Like if you're saying, hey, over that person's over there, you would not use your index. You would use your thumb. And I remember when I had a group of students, I was teaching at a university in Korea and they were going on an intercultural trip. 
And that was one of the things that I had to teach them. Like, don't go point, pointing. And if you do point, use this finger. Because, you know, as Americans, we don't tend to think about what other people think. Um, we just kind of do what we do, right? And so pointing, even though it can be it can be rude in some settings in the U.S., but oftentimes people point to like give directions or point at like that person over there. They're trying to point them out. Um, so just be mindful of that. And that's where this this video started because I was looking at some things and I was like, oh my god. I hope I didn't do that. I hope I didn't offend anybody. Um, but I want to make sure that I'm always cognizant of how I'm showing up. And again, sometimes you can unknowingly be rude or obnoxious or just downright disrespectful and not even know about it. So I hope that helps. If this does help and you like the content, you want to keep the content going, please like, share, and subscribe so that you can get the notification of when I have my next video. I hope this helps and I hope that if you're going to come to Malaysia that you are thinking about how you can respectfully show up in this country and abide the rules, but also be respectful of the culture and the people who are living here. Until next time, I'm Cha. Be safe, be blessed, but always be aware. Thank you.